Hi everybody, uh, Christina Blackfeather here, and I just thought I would uh, kind of get into something a little bit. Um, I just recently watched a hangout uh, that was held by Steve McGray, and uh, G-Man had done um, some spectacular errors in uh, what he was talking about. And the thing is, is that I have seen several uh creationists, young earth creationists especially, make um, this mistake. And the question goes to, can a dog become a non-dog? And um, while it was trying to be explained to G-Man, um, he was completely losing his shit. Um, pardon my language, but I'm going to say it as it is. Um, he would not listen. So, while I'm not an expert in phylogeny, and I suggest you go to Aaron Ra and his videos on phylogeny, um, because he is an expert in it, um, there are basic understandings of phylogeny that anybody who is willing to actually look it up would be able to find. And it isn't anything that you have to memorize, like I had to do in school or anything like that. Um, I don't remember the exact order of like the family trees and stuff like that. You know, I no. Um, but it's easy to look up and there are several sites. Um, there's universities, there are, you know, science sites, everything else that can easily explain this. So I'm going to try and explain this as simply as I can. Now you can see on the screen here. This is from uh, www.whozoo.org, and it is the mammal phylogeny, or the mammal family tree. Now, what we have here, we're going to go just into the dogs. So, they've got everything linked. They've got bats, they've got primates. We can go into primates. But you see what happens here. What they're talking about when they say that everything is interrelated. Carnivore and pangolins, or carnivores, and these other two I can't pronounce, and I'm not going to try, well, I suppose, Perissodactyla. Okay, that was pretty close. But they're like cousins. You see that they're interrelated right here. Carnivore and bats are actually interrelated back here. Um, then if you look, moles and bats are interrelated back here. You go back to this one, you have primates and bats are interrelated at this point. So if you keep doing this, what you're looking at is, is the mammal tree. None of us, not rabbits, not chipmunks, not beavers, not primates, not canines. None of us are not mammals. Mammals did not become non-mammal. We are all mammals. So what this divides into, let's go to carnivore. The carnivore phylogeny shows that back here, cats and dogs would be related, but they branched off. So you have cats, hyenas, mongooses, and civets are feline. Yes, hyenas are feline. If you go to the dog branch, which also is where bears are, so dogs and bears are closer related than cats. Bears have their own branch. Anything, if a bear goes into another species, if over time a species of bear is isolated long enough to become their own species, they still will be a bear. So a bear becoming a non-bear is not going to happen. It's, it, we will probably have to come up with more classifications as time goes on and as evolutionary process goes on. There will be more classifications for humans, there will be more classifications for bears, 
all of that, the tree will expand and these new classifications will be added over time. As we see species divide off, they will still be, a bear is still along the same branch as the dog, where they came from back here. So this creature back here, the bear still is one of those. The fur seal is still one of those. Now, if we go to the canids, and you see the canids and weasels still come from this same point right here. I don't remember what this one is specifically right here, but they're both of that type. They didn't become not that type. They still are. So if we go to the canid branch, so this is the canids right here. And this is where you see the speciation itself. The species are right here. You have the domestic dog and the gray wolf. They can interbreed yet. And depending on the uh, uh, type of mating that has happened and the genetics, a, a wolf hybrid and a wolf hybrid can produce viable pups. That's how you get wolves intermixed with huskies for Iditarod sled dogs, is a lot of those dogs up there will have wolf intermixed for the size and the ability to handle distance. So they can interbreed. However, you see here, now they are finding out that there are variants of coyote that they're trying to catch and actually study because they're questioning if there has been crossing with domestic dog, which has become an extremely dangerous animal. So if you look in this branch pretty much, except for the question on the red wolf here, these guys are going to be able to interbreed. However, domestic dog, you notice it branched off right here. So here's species that are interrelated. They are all canids. They never will be a non-canid. A domestic dog, well, a dog in general, because humanity is messed with um, species so, or messed with breeding so bad that, uh, oh, the bulldog is a prime example. But I don't think those will ever, ever branch off into their own species because humanity is you know, does a lot of crossbreeding, so. But if you look at the gray wolf, any new subsets after the gray wolf are still going to be gray wolves, but they will not be able to interbreed with anything else. They will be a separate species, and so on and so on. So from species, there will be another classification, and then there will be another classification from that, but that distant, distant subset of species will not be able to breed back with the gray wolf, and they are still a gray wolf. It never changed. Just like humans, we're still primates. We fall under the category of primate. We, we're human, but we're still primates. So any species that were to come from us and go beyond and become a subspecies, they would still be human even if they could not interbreed back with a human. They're still a branch of humanity, and that's how this works. It branches off. So you see here, the foxes cannot reproduce successfully with a domestic dog. Now, I have personally seen a, there is a group of very, very uh, unethical breeders out there that are breeding foxes with dogs to come up with something incredibly cute. Um, and they kill off everything that does not uh, uh, come out perfect. I met somebody at the Renaissance Festival last year that had their little fox Pomeranian cross 
in a holder, a baby holder on their chest. This dog was paralyzed from the waist down because the dog had large sections of the spine missing. So they have to calf this dog, they have to carry the animal around, they have to do things to help it expel its stool because this cross and this cross do not happen and none of them are fertile if it is successful at all, which very few of these pups are successful in the first place. So that is the reality of trying to cross a species. And usually they can't create a new species out of doing that because there is infertility, there are genetic problems. However, a red fox is still a canid. An African wild dog and a jackal are still canids. They just are separate species and cannot reproduce. Only within their own branch would they be able to reproduce. This one, no. This one, no. These two, possibly. These two, I'm sure it happens. This and this, no. But all of these are still canids. They never became a non-canid. So that is what evolution is talking about. Um, that is what people who are trying to teach you about evolution are talking about, is the fact, like humans, we are still primates. Go back, we are still mammals. Go back, we are still eukaryotes. We never became a non-eukaryote. We never became a non-mammal. We still milk. We never became a non-primate. We are still primates. And that is what it means. So your idea that something can reproduce a different speed, you know, that something, a, the simple thing, a cat will produce a non-cat, is never, ever, ever going to happen. That is your misunderstanding of how evolution works. And I just felt I need to address, address that. I just wanted to get that out there. Hopefully it's explanation enough. Um, there's simple explanations on Family Canada on Wikipedia. There's other places you can look up phylogenic trees on, uh, on Google search. Under images, you can look under websites. There is a lot here that explains it for you. Some not as simple as others, I admit. I tried to choose the simplest that I could. But here you can see what happened as far as what developed at what time. And so you can see mammals went and branched off way over here. Turtles branched off way over here. Um, your birds branched off way over here and at some point they developed no teeth. And a Tyrannosaurus, of course, is never going to reproduce a bird. They're not on the same branch. They're very distant cousins. But the dinosaur that birds evolved from was not the same species as a Tyrannosaurus rex. And I hear that argument quite a bit too. Um, so yeah, I, it just takes a little bit of looking up. You can understand what the theory is talking about. If you agree with it or not, that's not my issue. But at least, if you're going to talk about it, at least understand what the theory is saying and what everybody's trying to say. Otherwise, I'm sorry if you're not willing to educate yourself first before you open your mouth, then you're looking like a dumbass. And anyway, that's it. So blessed be everybody. I hope this was helpful. Take care.